reinforced concrete beam normally have a lower degree of cross-sectional area in comparison to the load attained on it. For that, shear reinforcements are normally required. This video explains the typical principles of the shear reinforcement in reinforced concrete beam. It is assumed that in shear, a reinforced concrete beam would behave like an analogous truss. The truss comprise of three main elements, which are the concrete, steel and vertical links. The concrete behave as a compression member and the steel behave as a tension member and the transverse uh, tensile member would be the vertical links. The truss here assume that the concrete has no contributions to the shear capacity and all the shear will be resisted by the shear link. This figure shows a typical analogous truss in the reinforced concrete beam. The beam here behave as if a truss where the top part here and their compressions, the bottom part here and their compressions, the vertical part here undergoing tensions while the diagonal part here undergo compressions. The compressions are taken by the concrete. The bottom tension here is taken by the tensile steel, while the vertical tension load here is taken by the shelling. There is an angle data indicating the gradient of the compressive strut in the concrete. The angle increases with the magnitude of the shear force and the compressive force in the diagonal concrete member. According to Eurocode, it ranges between 22 degree to 45 degree angle. The analysis of the thrust in the reinforced concrete beam here involves considerations of the compressive strength of the diagonal struts and its angle and then calculations of the required amount of shear reinforcement bar for the vertical ties and then calculate for the additional tension area required at the bottom cord member. This shall be explained in the following slides.